Maze 2. Domain. Hmm. <laughs> Domain error. Okay, uh, C K plus one. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, I think I see in K plus one RK. I think. So this should be 15, which is correct. Okay, so this is the bottom right triangle so to print out the bottom right triangle we iterate from 2 to 8 so it's crashing on the first iteration we iterate from 2 to 8 from and then k plus 1 um, we, t we take the sub string one, we take C minus three plus B minus W times V, which is a lot of minusing, actually. Jeez. Okay. Um, I think I, I don't even know. I might have to like write this down, like C minus three plus B minus W times V plus A. Like that's a lot. 16 minus K. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's like ridiculously. Um, so let's see, let's see what's B. Okay, so C minus three plus B times minus W. V plus A is zero, which is which is silly because we should not be getting a zero there. Uh, what we should be getting is. Um, <clears throat> Actually, we should be getting a 1 because, wait, why, why should we be getting a 1? Because we're printing the very upper left portion of the, um, of the maze at this, on this particular iteration. So, the, so what we should be getting for the substring is a 1, but we're getting a 0. Why are we getting a 0? We should not be getting a zero. What's A? A is 16, that's correct. What's B? B is eight, that's correct. What's W? W is eight, that's correct. Uh, what's C? C is two, that's correct. So we have the wrong formula because all the numbers are correct, what they should be. Um, minusing three might not be the correct way to go about doing this. It might have worked if we didn't subtract w, but if we're subtracting w, it might, it actually might make it not work. I don't know. Because 
Will it? it I mean, it is linear. <clears throat> it, it shouldn't matter. So if, if I did like minus two, and then like I subtracted like if v here, we still get zero, see? So it's not that part of the formula that's wrong. There's something going on here that I just did not calculate properly. Um, that I should be getting a one Why is it crashing on this one and not the uh, the other one though? That's shouldn't it? Okay, here we go. Please take me back to the same one. Good. Yeah, it's not crashing on either of these two previous ones, which is interesting. It's crashing on the bottom right-hand corner. But it's crashing on the upper left part of it, which is a little goofy. But that's okay. It's okay. Um. CK plus one, substring one. I gotta think about this for a minute. Times V plus one. 16 minus K. Hold on a second. So, what am I doing wrong here? This... So what does this represent? C minus 3 plus B minus W plus A C minus 3 minus W. Usually, if I minus W, don't I need to add 1? Or something? I might have to add 1. Um... Times V plus A. Plus 16. It can't be negative 16. That's, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's think through this a little more carefully. So, it's really confusing. Um, maybe I should break out some paper here. In fact, I'll do that. So I wrote this down and basically I'm uh, basically I'm taking So let's pretend this is the actual tire maze, and then we're taking a sub screen of that. It's actually good that I'll draw this out for once. Um, so this is the upper right hand part, and we need to basically look at like, oh, actually we're drawing this right here. So this is where it's messing up is when we're drawing basically this upper like this upper left hand part down here. So, <clears throat> so if this is our screen, this is like the the bottom right hand part. Um, in our case, this goes from one to sixteen, and this goes from one to eight. But so does this for this particular iteration. Um, and for this particular portion, we actually have. Let's, let me draw this a little more carefully. So, if this is our screen, this is where it's trying to draw and it's screwing up here. So, because it's getting... It's 
basically getting zero where it needs to be getting one. So if you if we listed out all the numbers of the screen from one, two, three, sixteen, do 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 do. And uh, a very large number here. I have a calculator in front of me. <laughs> 128. So what we want is we want this to be a 1. This should be like 128, right? And this should be kind of like this number right here. Um, so this should be like 120 or whatever through 127. This should be like 1 or 16 through like like the, the number that's right here. So like 126. And then this should be like 1 through whatever and then like 125. So, be 526, and then this is lower, but this would be like 127. Um, so how is this being split up up here? This is confusing, but basically the, the map is being split like that. So, <laughs> 16, and then if you go to the right, you got a 1. So that's why the 1 is to the right of it. Um, so, why are we getting a, a 0? C tells us which C tells us which like how high we are on the screen. So C is just like, well, we're not here, we're here. So C is 2, which is correct. Then we take that and we also add B, which is how far we are on here. Um, y wise, so that's eight, and that's here. And we add that um, and multiply it by V. But before we do that, we subtract two because this actually is like seven and then this counts as like one because we want to do those zero based. So now we have like eight total subtract so total multiplications of our V, which is our width. So we're subtracting like eight rows. Um, or we're not subtracting 8 rows, we're basically adding 8 rows to A. But then we're subtracting another row at the end to make up for it. And then A is already 16, so... What is C minus 3 plus B minus W? What is that number? Negative 1. So we're negative one A, which is our V. I don't know. I don't know. Negative one for our
for x and then we add a to that. Um, yeah, it's weird. Negative one for x instead of zero. We usually would add up to zero and then we'd add a to that. So we want it so that our a tells us this is so confusing. Okay. So A should tell us where we're looking on the map, not on our screen. A should tell us that we're somewhere over here or whatever. Um, and what A and B tell us is that we're actually looking here. That's their coordinates. A and B are 8 and 16. Um, I don't know why it doesn't work. I'm really confused. So if our A and B were one, the string that we start off should be one. But if our A and B are here, then the string we should be reading would be we should be like the last string. It should be like string one twenty eight. Or no, it should be uh, I'm I think I'm confusing myself now. I think my mind's starting to get to wear out. If this is our screen and we're saying, okay, we need to draw here the map. then we need to figure out which part of the map that goes here, which part goes here. And to figure that, to figure out that a one goes in the upper left, okay, that means we need to split up. So that for loop is basically like splitting this up kind of. And to look at what goes here, we need this substring of our map, okay? And that substring is one, and it should be 15 long. So k is one, and I'm subtracting 16 from k, right? So let's go to maze two. Let's like move down or right or whatever. So we have 16 minus k, and that equals 15, which is good, because that's how long this needs to be. So it's the correct length. And we're outputting it at the correct place, which is at 2, 2. So like everything seems to be correct, except for we're getting the wrong number for the starting position of the string. That needs to be 1. It's not supposed to be 0. It's supposed to be 1. And I'm not sure why it's, why it's 1. Um, because it didn't crash in, in either of the other loops. Which, maybe I did their calculation wrong. Um, let's just double check, just to make sure that we did everything correctly. Because I think something's wrong here. And it's too bad that it's screwed up in the corner rather than like sideways at first.
but maybe it did script sideways, but then I didn't notice. I'm sorry, this is getting this is confusing. Um so let's calculate how we do our starting position here. Um with the with our earlier for loop. We have C minus 2 plus B minus W times V plus A gives it. And then um, does that work? Um, if we need to go So A could be like, six. I guess if A is 16, then C minus 2 plus, two plus B minus W times V. Let's figure out what that is. Okay, if A is 16 and C is 2 and B is 8 and W and V are also 8 and 16, um, then that gives us 16. Which I believe is correct because if we look at the if we look at the paper here, this should be sixteen, right? Um, right. Okay. So. And that's starting with. C is going to e pl be e plus 1, so C is going to be 2, and yeah. It's going to give us the right one, and then K, which K should be 15. So it goes from 16 through uh, 126 or whatever. 16 through... Or no, K is 1, sorry. In that case, K should be... One, yep. Okay, so that means the other one should get us 120. And if it doesn't, then that's where we screwed up. So let's see if that's where let, let's see if that's the one where we screwed up. So not this one, but this the second one right here. So C minus three plus B times V plus A. That should be 120, not like 119 or anything. It should be 120. And that actually might be where I screwed up. Let's see. Okay, let's subtract 3 and then not subtract W. And then uh, plus, let's see here. Um, C is supposed to be 1. Um, hold on. I lied about it being 120. It's uh, 128 minus 16 is 112, but but 
but if you count it, see here's the thing, it should be 113. Because if you count 113 through 128, that should be 16, right? Because if you, if you take 112 and you add 16, you get 128, there's 16 numbers after 112. Okay, so I'm not sure why exactly, why I didn't do that correctly. Um, because I'm not even sure why I didn't, like, I don't know why, I don't fully understand yet, but I know what's wrong, what I, what, what's wrong and how to fix it. Um, and it's this. So, basically, I just need to add one here, not just here, but also, um, here too. I'm not sure exactly why, but yeah. But yeah, apparently that that makes it correct. It's I'm a little confused on why. Okay, looks like it. It kind of looked like it spat out a clean maze at us for a second there. Um, but now we got another domain error. <laughs> um, not sure why. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. So C and then K plus 1. And then our same stuff we had before. And then 16 minus K. This is so confusing. So let's see, what's our C? Okay, K plus one. Okay, and then that random stuff that I've had before. Plus one, 16, that should be okay. No, that shouldn't be okay. No. Why is it zero? Is it zero? I am very confused now. So what's B? B is 8. What's A? A is 15. Now I'm, okay. Now I don't know what to... I don't even know anymore. I don't... I'm not sure... This is really confusing me now. So apparently adding one doesn't help um, <laughs> when it's supposed to. Um, why? <clears throat> I'm not sure. Um, I put C, K plus 1, substring K plus 1, minus, minus 3, plus B, minus W, minus W, what's W, what W is the, the height, so I'm subtracting 1 height, 1 height's worth, no, I'm subtracting the height, Is it crashing here again? Not on the other one, which is weird. I would end up crash on the other one. It's getting me a zero though again though, isn't it? Which isn't right. Okay, anyway, if A and B... Okay, well, let's figure this out again. We're just going to have to debug it for this one. So if A is 15 and B is 8, what is that on paper? Well, that means... If 
for the map. We're looking at this, not this one. So we're looking at this, not that. And then, um, so that means on the screen, it's going to be twice as much. So we're going to have this one right here. So we should still be getting a 1 there, shouldn't we be getting a 1 or something, depending, depending on what, no, hold on. Okay, I'm confused, but I think this is the way it's supposed to work. If A, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. If A is here, or if it, hold on, if this side is how tall is this side? B and A. So if A is 15, then we're talking about here. Okay. So what am I calculating when I calculate the when I'm calculating this this number thing? I'm calculating what what part of the maze we're looking at for the bottom right. Um, it should always be 1-1 one, one if we're splitting the, the screen up. I don't see why it wouldn't be 1-1. One, one. Like, think about it. Like, no matter what, the bottom right part of the screen, if we're splitting it up, it's going to be the top left part of the maze, and it's always going to be one. Always. Right? Like, it just doesn't make sense for it not to be one. Like, how is it not one? It should always be one. Um, I don't even know why I have to, like, calculate that. In fact, I don't even know what I'm doing calculate. I don't even... Why am I even trying to calculate that? Let me go back to it. I'm, I'm, let me think about this for a second. Okay, so this is where we print the upper left. This is where we print the lower left. The, the lower left, which on the map, let's go back to this picture. The lower left part of the screen is the upper right part of the map. So it always will end in the right part of the map. Right? So that's why K, that's why I use K, because K tells me how much. Screen width I have. For C is E plus 1 to 8. I'll put C1 substring. Why do I have the if K is less than 16 check? Again. Oh yeah, because if it's greater than 16, then um, down here... we'll be trying to output something that's not on the screen at all. We only want to output there if it's not on the screen. But still, like, we're not reaching these unless we need to. 
which is going to be most of the time, but 1 out of 16, it's not. This is really confusing. Yeah, I knew using strings would, would take a while. I know it would be really frustrating to do, but it is going to be worth it in the end if I do get this working. It'll be very, very nice. For C is 1 to E, output C, K plus 1, substring 1, C minus 3 plus B times V. So V is our number of rows. So just subtracting 3 rows instead of 2. Right? So we subtract however many rows for C and for B, or we add. So B tells us how far down we are. So we add that many rows. C tells us what row we're actually drawing. So we add that many rows to that. But we only want to add a full row. We don't want to add one plus that row. So that's why we subtract one for that one. We subtract one for that one. And then we're subtracting another row. I think I figured out what my problem was. I think I figured it out. I think. Not sure, but I think I figured it out. So, hold on a second. Let me just double check. So this is the bottom right, right? You subtract W. Wait, 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 wait. I don't even know how, what's a good way to like figure out this kind of math? Like how do you even, what's a clean way to just work with these kind of, with changing coordinates and stuff like that? Cause it always confuses me. Just always confuses me. Um, let's just let's try this slowly. Okay, we have our screen, or we have our mace, and it goes from one. Okay, it goes from one, and what's the width? The width is the x which is v and then height is w okay okay then we have what we call our a and b which are on this thing so we have some a and we have some b Okay. And that represents our screen. So on our screen we have one, one, and then we have, this is always going to be 16 and this is always going to be 8. Okay. So we have our A and B, we have our V and W, we have our 16 and our 8. And then we have our four loops for each of these four kind of section things to draw them. Um, yep. So that's the way it's supposed to work. So I'm going to look through this code and just double check 
the logic and how all the variables work because this is where the code's breaking because I checked all the variables they are they're all correct just gotta see why I'm getting zeros when I'm not supposed to because the formula is what's wrong um, so I start from C and go from 1 to E so what's E? E tells me basically how high this is so this is like this is E right here on this on the smaller one okay so E tells me how like high this thing is and then uh, K tells me how how wide it is okay so I go and then C is a counter that that goes for me it goes from 1 to E so C kind of just goes from here and it goes from 1 to E and I take substring of my map I take C minus 2 so whatever this row is I take C and B and add them together so I get like, I might start with this row and then I end up with like maybe this row or something like that. I add C and B together and since they start at 1 I subtract 2 so it's like they're 0 and I multiply that by V, this entire length. So this has a really long string and I take what, however, however much these are, I add them together to find out which row on this map that I want and then I sub and I subtract 2 and multiply it by V so that gives me the actual row across and then I add A to that so A gives me so I got my row and now I add A and now I know like for example um, that I need this string because I want this this box or something and then K is how long I take and so that's that's the logic behind this first loop okay and that seems to work okay and then the second loop is down here it's the same thing it's pretty much the same thing but I go from E plus 1 to 8. So C goes from here to here. And then I subtract the the um I subtract B. So B is still the same. And uh but C is greater. So now C is kind of like off off the chart. It's like what? It's all the way up here. So what I'm doing is I'm subtracting W which is the number of rows the entire map has. I'm subtracting W and now I'm up here again. So f to find like this row for example I'm actually getting that row. And that also seems to work but I think it seems to crash when I do this right side. So I think I'm doing something wrong there. Um, because when I add A, yeah, it seems to get the row correctly, and then I, I just draw it there. And then, it, of course, K is the length. Now, if K is less than 16, which it is, see K is in between 1 and 16 here, then I start working on this one. And I say, well, okay, I'm going to go from 1 to E, so C goes from here to here again. And I'm going to take k plus 1, which is, since this is like 1 through k, this is like k plus 1 through 16. Um, and I'm going to start drawing there, as far as like the x is concerned on the screen. And I'm going to take... Um, C and B, just like I did before here. 
So I'm going to find this row, this particular row. But I'm actually going to subtract. another one which is kind of silly and then I add a and then I add one yeah that doesn't make sense uh, <laughs> yeah that doesn't make sense okay so it should be C minus 2 plus b and if I need to subtract w from that like that would make sense but what am I doing to get it here I'm I need to subtract v right um but not an entire v I need to subtract ah that's where I messed up I think so what I need to do to separate, so what I do to separate this side from this side is I subtract W from down here. And what I was trying to do is I was trying to take this and say like, oh well, subtract V from it. Um, well because if you go forward, actually no that does make sense, because if you go forward then this is like your theoretical space but if you subtract V from it you're actually looking at here which is the correct space so yeah I am subtracting one more from V which should be correct like that should actually work and then when I add A I get zero somehow and that's silly so then I started adding one just to correct that, but that's that was just a hack because um, and then the length of this is 16 minus k, which is correct because that's the length of this right here. So why would I get zero when this is clearly one right here? Why would I get a zero for this first box? That doesn't make sense. I mean, does it? Or actually, I get negative 1 now that it's 15. That's a funny thing. Um, so a possible explanation is that maybe I shouldn't be subtracting V, maybe I should be subtracting part of V. Um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Or maybe I should Maybe if it is zero, maybe I should wrap it or something. I don't know. Maybe I should be adding V to it. Or I should be adding 16 or something. I don't know. Should I be adding 16 to it? Instead of 1? No, because 1... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is.
Okay, so I'm here. And I go up one. I'm here. I'm looking at this spot right here. I need it to be this spot on the map. How do I make it that spot on the map? Well, I subtract I basically find the next one after this one and then I subtract a row. That's how I find it. Right. I find the next one on there and then I subtract a row. Or if I'm on here, I find the next one to the right and then I subtract a row. So I, I should just be able to continue on, do everything exactly the same, but just subtract a row. That should be like the only difference. I don't see why that wouldn't work. And that's what I had. It's exactly what I had. because I was starting from V I don't know but sixteen minus K C uh. I'm really, I'm so determined to finish this because I just want to play a maze that's that's really big or, or one that wraps. I just really want to do that. It just seems so cool. C minus 3 plus B minus W. So when I add to the C, when I make C, so first I make C go th from 1 to E, and then I make it go from E plus 1 to 8. So what I need to do with the, this X coordinate is I need to make it go from 1 to K, and then K plus 1 to 16. And maybe that's where I, what I'm missing. Maybe I forgot to add the k plus 1. Because I'm adding a, but I need to add... Um, I need to add k plus 1, actually. Which I'm not doing. No wonder why I wanted to add 1. Um, but no, if I add k plus 1... No, okay, so if A is 1, then I just need to add K. So if K was 1 in that case, <gasps> that it crashed that first time, and I was thinking, oh, well, I need to add 1. No, it was because I needed to add K. Wow.
that entire time all I needed to do was add K. Okay, so this is it. So let's zoom in a little bit. So it took me a while to figure out what I did wrong. But uh, actually, I needed to add K here instead of 1. That's a pretty... That's a that's a kind of a downer because for how fast we programmed most of this, uh, it wasn't bad. But to come across, okay, come on. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I screwed that up. I screwed that up. Uh, this should be plus k. This one. Should be plus k as well. This one should not be plus k. Okay, let's try that again. Uh oh. What's our domain error this time? Okay, so now we got a y x problem. So what's our y and our x? y is 4, x is negative 14, what? What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> How did our x turn into negative 14? Okay, I screwed the x up somewhere, that's weird. Um. X stores L, M stores Y. Where am I using X? Am I... P minus G. Plus one stores X. P minus G plus one. Okay. Okay, so P is zero and G is fifteen. Um do do do. Okay, let's go see what the issue is there. I remember I tried to correct it, so if it was off, then we try to move the screen accordingly, right? So, but 14 is really far off, so how is P, what is it, P is 0 and G is 15? Let's go remember what P and G are again. So P N and O um N and O were our X and Y. And then P and Q are our... Okay, yes, they are X, R, Y, X and Y on the map. So if P is zero, that's not a big deal. It's a zero on the map. Okay, and then A and B say where we are, our upper left-hand corner on the map. Okay, so if we're on zero, which we shouldn't be, that doesn't make any sense. Right, if we're z
if p is less than 1, then v stores as p. So p should not even be 0. I don't even get how p is 0. That doesn't even make sense to me. Um, if g is greater than p, then g minus v stores p. So I guess that's where it turned to be 0. And where did I get that from? If g is greater than p. Oh, that's why. This, I should be changing, I should be changing G here, not P. Okay, so that, that's why it was weird. Um, let's go back to Mace 2. That was probably what caused the error. Um, I don't know why I'm drawing myself in weird places, but it looks like the scrolling kind of worked somehow. I don't know how this is what's going on, but the scrolling kind of worked while well, it did, and now I'm stuck in... Looks like I can go in three of these places for whatever reason. I have no idea why. But anyway, um, let's go try to figure that out now. Um, yeah, this is weird, but what I'm trying to do is program it so it works very generically. We can make a really large maze and try to solve it, and we won't have to worry about going to multiple screens or anything like that. This is actually more sophisticated than our Zelda game in that sense. Wow, I'm just amazed. I'm just... I, I don't know. I don't even know what to think. This is very... I almost didn't want to do this because of how much work it is. I almost did not want to do this at all. Um, and I'm surprised that I programmed most of it and now I'm just trying to... been trying to debug it for what seems like hours now. Um, yeah, so let's see. So... N and O. We're supposed to store things back into N and O, if I'm if I'm correct. N and O. P and Q are just supposed to be temporary guesses of which where we're trying to go. So we save N and O into P and Q. We we move accordingly. We check where P and Q really end up. We check if it's okay. Um, then we check A and B, and we're like, hey, is that cool? Um, what are A and B's? If it, if it is okay, then, then we do this thing. I see. I see what the problem is now. Um, this is the problem. The problem is we had no business. Okay, so the problem is um, basically N and O should be stored back. P N and O. So we need to save N and O. Like P and Q need to be saved into N and O. Um, if we're able to move. So, so P and Q, if we successfully moved, which if we reached this if statement, then we did. If P and Q successfully moved, then we need to save them into N and O. So P store to N, and then Q store to O. And I'm sorry for the... Uh, the light keeps flickering, and I believe that's because maybe the power is about to go out or something because there's some sort of, um, there's a mess outside. So let's just go ahead and try to run Maze 2 again. And we should be able to 
I'm not I'm not sure why I'm plotting things where I am. Okay. Oh. Ha. I see. Um looks like I did the the checking backwards. I'm able to only walk on walls instead of only walk on the in between places, which is silly. I don't know why I did that. Let's go ahead and fix that really quick. But yeah, if it is, not if it's greater than zero, if it is equal to zero, because I guess zero is a space, so yeah. So here we go. Looks like I can move, it looks like the, like, after just debugging that those couple things, that's all we needed to do. So I'm able to move up and down, and if it if it needs to scroll the screen, then it does which is actually pretty awesome. Um, ooh, this is, this is real nice. This is super nice. Wow, if this is it, if, if that was the only debugging I had to do, then, uh, then we're close. That's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna move right, I'm gonna move up. Wow, this is actually pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I I am actually like legitimately trying to like find out where to go now. Um I'm already getting into the game, which is cool. That's really cool. So I'm just going to go up. Oh my god, this is actually so cool. Okay, um I'm going to go <laughs> cuz I'm going to go down, but I'm stuck. Wait, is that the whole maze then? I guess that's the whole thing. Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing then. Um, yeah, so I guess we need to program like the end or something, or maybe put like a, maybe just put it in the matrix. I could, instead of having variables for it, what I could do is I could just pick a random like spot and put it in like the matrix and just, if you find it, then you win or whatever, like something dumb like that. Cause that would be easier to check for than to have to check like extra variables. Like I might as well draw it or something because I could I could put it in the string like the string could check um, it actually would work just perfectly if I did that like because it's a static thing anyway so I might as well do that um, but right now it looks like it works okay so this is like the ultimate most ridiculous test that it is either gonna break everything or it's gonna work and I'm scared so so I don't know. I really I don't know. I really don't know. We got to make it a multiple of two, and it's got to be bigger than the screen. But um, yeah, I'm scared. But let's try it. Let's try it. Let's make this 16. Make this 32, and just let's try it. Just forget everything. I want to see if it works. I'm scared. I want to see if it works. This is going to take forever. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Okay, okay, okay. Um... Okay, uh, I got to make sure we delete the lists, actually, because if we don't delete them, that's really bad. And I'm not, I'm gonna run out of memory. So I need to delete like list one, list two. Do I delete them here? Yeah, so what I need to do Okay, so what, yeah. So what I need to do is I actually need to delete a few things just to make sure we don't run out of memory. So I'm going to do delete, delete var list one, uh, delete var list two, delete var, <laughs> um, matrix B, 
matrix a you know i gotta delete these things just to make sure just in case i try to something big and then can't do anything after that okay that should help with me testing bigger numbers okay let's just instead of doing 16 we're gonna do like 12 and then for here we're gonna do like we're gonna do like 20 or something let's see if that works please work at least I think we should know early on if it uses too much memory because I think it what we do is we make the lists first and like we allocate the matrices early on and then we like process them and stuff so we should know early on if it's like if it takes too much memory or anything but this is the first time we're actually testing this with a maze that's like bigger than the screen and if it works i'm gonna be happy if it doesn't work i'm gonna like cry my eyeballs out no i'm not but like this is gonna be so cool because this is like the first time i've made like an rpg thing where you can like move around and explore the screen follows you and it, the world is bigger than the screen and it's a maze so it's actually like more interesting than just walking around nowhere like yeah you could make that where it follows the screen and then you just like there's a couple o's around or something but like that's stupid like this is a legit maze come on and we might as well make we might as well put the winning thing in there before we end the episode because this is like gonna be the the longest episode ever i should split this into like 10 episodes like it's so long but it's gonna be good the ending is good and I hated that debugging that debugging got me made me want to quit it almost it almost killed me so here we go still process is gonna take so long which is why I needed a loading a loading screen thing because who knows how long it's gonna take I'd rather look at I'd rather it tell me um, and take even a little longer just so it can tell me than it not tell me. So that's two things we need. We need a loading screen, which the longer that took, the more it convinced me I think we need one. But we also need a winning, because I want to be able to win this. This is dumb if I can't win. Okay. Notice how it should be centering me. Yeah, see? Told you. It automatically... Like, it'll figure out how to get me, uh, how to correct the screen, which is nice. Because it can handle it just fine if I'm near the edge. It's It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Oh my god, this is so cool. I'm, like, exploring around. Okay, um... Yeah, I should just make an episode where we just play it. Like, forget programming. We're just gonna play it. Like, I'm gonna post it now. That's what I should do, just to just to reward for like the this long episode, just because this episode was so like long, I should just just be cool and just like have an episode where we just play it. That way, no one has to. If they just want to see the end result, they can just watch it. Like they can be like, "Oh, cool! That's what he made during that huge long time," or whatever. Yeah. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm not even searching for anything, like, there's no end, so what's the point? Oh, come on, that's a dead end. Come on, that stinks. I don't know where to go. I'm not even good at this. Like, I want to go, okay, so how do I go to the left, to my right? Like, how do I get into that? Like, I want to find my way into that dead end somehow, if that's possible. It's, like, four tall or something. So, yeah, let's go to it. I don't know how to get there. Maybe down, maybe through here or something. There should be only one way there because it's a tree, so there should be only one possible way to get to it. And I don't know, is this it? Oh, I found it. Cool. So I found my way to the, the four high thing. That's cool, I guess. Um, yeah. So I guess I figured out this maze, and this maze is cool because it's like... It's just cool because it's taller than the screen and it's wider than the screen. Like it's just, it's a decent, it's like a huger maze than, oop, sorry about that. That's what I get for putting my calculator on top of a piece of paper. 
Yep, that's a dead end. I should put stuff on in the dead ends. Like this is silly. Like I should make it so you have to collect all these like dots or something. Should I do that? Should I like add like dots and you have to collect like all like ten or something? Just like ten random dots everywhere. And when you collect all of them then you then like you win or something. Like, oh you collected a dot. Like five more to go or something. Or you it doesn't even tell you how many more to go. You just have to find them. Like, they're just out there somewhere. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. Um, I want to do the dot thing just because it's more interesting than just finding an end. Like, you have to, it makes you explore the maze. And actually, I could make this run faster because, like, the fact that it's printing out strings is actually pretty fast. But, like, it, I think it's actually spending more time just doing, like, logical checks even. Well, no, it's not bad. I can tell because just moving up and down here is kind of slow. So, like, adding that to the strings, like, makes the strings look like they're nothing. Like, I could improve my logic to make it... So it's not so bad. I could also change it so you can get closer to the edge of the screen before it tries to scroll. But the thing, the downside to that is you can't see where you're going, which I wouldn't like that. I'd rather see, I'd rather see where I'm going than like see where I've been. I think it's actually better to do it that way. So. This is actually kind of, it's almost like it doesn't scroll enough. Like it should scroll even more like than it does now, but it's okay. Oh my goodness, this is so awesome. Okay, I should save this for like the let's play this game episode because it's just so cool. Ugh, this is so awesome. Okay, well, it looked like it worked, worked, work. Look like it worked. Look like it worked. Um, I don't know. What should I do? Should I uh, end this episode now and make another episode where we make it so you can win, or should I add that to this episode? I don't know. Um, maybe we should end this episode now because that was forever and ever and ever and ever. And yeah, I think I'll just end it now because that was that was forever. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Tim, and uh, hopefully we can have fun with this maze uh, later on. Bye.